Welcome. Uh, this is 108 Stitches, and my name is Emily. And I think I did that in the opposite order that I normally do. <laughs> but uh, we're just going to keep going. Uh, welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in today. If you're new here, this is a video podcast, uh, mostly about knitting. Sometimes I'll talk about other stuff. I've done a little weaving recently. Very occasionally I will do some sewing, but the meat of this podcast is about knitting. Um, and yeah, I know it's been a couple of weeks. I am feeling a little bit overwhelmed today. There's a lot going on. I am headed out to Arizona for work, uh, for spring training for the next, uh, three weeks. I'm leaving tomorrow. And so I'm trying to get everything done before that work-wise and also just like, uh, like wrapping stuff up at home and packing and like I wanted to make sure to get a podcast in because I did not want to go for like five, six straight weeks without uh, chatting with you all and I have a lot that I wanted to share, mostly acquisitions, <laughs> I will say, uh, more so than actual, I mean I've got some fun knitting content and everything to, to share with you as well, you may have noticed what I'm wearing today and we'll get into that in a second but yeah definitely been feeling a little bit overwhelmed today and I'm trying to just you know take deep breaths do one thing at a time I've got a lengthy uh list here of all the things I have to take care of today as well as my notes for this episode so we're just gonna go through one thing at a time and one of the items on my list today is to record a podcast so I'm doing that now and um and yeah thanks for tuning in and listening to it so this probably won't go up today today is uh Sunday March 6th March is here wow can't believe it um and yeah like I mentioned I'm heading out to Arizona tomorrow I am flying uh, flying out tomorrow morning. So, uh, I guess, yeah, for those of you who are new as well, I work as my technical title is the coordinator of baseball projects for the Seattle Mariners. And, uh, I am essentially kind of like a baseball analyst type person. Uh, and I'm heading out for the last, uh, few weeks of spring training, or I guess, I don't know, things are very up in the air in the baseball world right now. And I'm not going to talk about that <laughs> really. Um, but I will just say, yes, I am heading out um, and will be involved in doing some work there uh, at the complex in Arizona. So, wow, this feels really disjointed, even like more disjointed than normal for me. Does it feel like that to you guys? I'm going uh, <laughs> to do my best. And I think the the key to me, like getting on track here is to just like go right into talking about knitting. So we're gonna do that. I've got a couple finished objects to share with you all. I've got some works in progress and I also have a ton of acquisitions <laughs> to share. I've got beautiful yarn. So if you wanna just like sit back and just like look at beautiful yarn, then this is the place to be. Uh, I've got a lot of beautiful yarn to show you. So. Let's get started with finished objects. So I started doing the this month's knits, um, which is a like a hashtag on Instagram. Um, and I originally saw it because um, uh, Natasha of Northern Northern Knits and Pearls, Northern Knits and Pearl, I think uh, she started doing this last year and I really loved it and I wanted to participate this year and uh I think some folks do it differently some folks do just like all the things that they worked on in that month and will show like you know progress like projects that are in progress as well but I put my own little twist on it and I'm only showing the things that I finished each month and then I'm also including uh I have like a little kind of what is it even called like a letter board like one of those little boards that you can put the plastic letters in and like you know write out different things i have a little board where i'm putting on my yardage for each project as well and i have a spreadsheet where i'm keeping track of the yardage for all of my projects this year so at the end of the year i can look up and see like how many yards of yarn i knit uh and i also i mean i'm already like really behind on this goal well, I guess it's not really a goal, but just trying to track like how much yardage I bring into my stash and how much I knit out. So like, 
am, do, am I buying more yarn than I'm using? <laughs> Which I probably am, but uh, that's just the yardage is, I think, a really good way to track that. So anyway, uh, because I have set this uh, up where I want to have finished objects by the end of each month so that I can include them in that post, it was a sprint for me to finish a couple of things uh, by, I guess, the last day of February was Monday, I think. So I was really trying to get things done by Monday. And so I finished all the things I wanted to. Um, and one of them was the wrap that I showed y'all last week. And then the other things I finished this month were I finished my second broken rib sock. So actually, which one is my second one? This one's my second one. So this is a pair of socks that I started forever ago and I was on the first sock forever and I just like left it and worked on other stuff. And, um, and I just like cast this on with some leftover yarn I had. And this is a like self-drafted pattern. I didn't, excuse me, I didn't follow a pattern for this. I just did like a basic broken rib sock and the yarn is Grenouille. Uh, one, of, one of my viewers commented on, I think, my past, or like one of my previous episodes saying that I was pronouncing Grenouille wrong, and you're absolutely right that I am, uh, and I really appreciate that, but uh, just based on the way that my, like, vocalizing works, I don't think I can do the, like, French R properly, uh, so I did, like, look it up, and I listened to how to say it properly, and... I, like, I'm gonna do my best. I'm, I, I am kind of, I'm like doing the best that I can, but I just, I can't do the French R properly. So hopefully y'all know what I mean. I'm really sorry, but it is what it is. But anyway, uh, yes, this is Gren, I can't do it. Gre uh, I'll just say Grenouille. Uh, in her 75 to 25 sock base, which is a base I don't think she carries anymore. It's a little bit of like a sturdier sock. I think she only carries the 8515 merino nylon now, which is a really nice base. That one's like really soft and squishy. So, um, but yeah, this is the colorway lamp black, which if you guys have watched the podcast before, you know, like this is my favorite gray. This is my favorite color. I have lots of things made out of this and this is showing up really dark this morning, but Hopefully you can see a little bit of the stitch definition and the color there. Really happy with this. And I now have a matching pair of socks. I have not yet woven in the ends. I have not yet blocked these. <laughs> I was hoping to do that before I left for my trip so I could take them with me. It's probably not gonna happen. <laughs> I'm doing my best, okay? <laughs> I am doing the best that I can. But uh, I finished the first sock last month, in, well, in January, and then I finished the second sock in February. Uh, I also finished the second sock of my, this pattern actually has a name now, it is the Almost Argyle Socks. I don't remember which one is the first one and which one is the second one. I can't really tell. I mean, y'all probably won't be able to tell, so it's not a big deal, but I finished my second almost Argyle sock. So this is my original sample for the new pattern that I wrote. This is a sock pattern um, that I wrote and uh, have had tested as well. So uh, you may have seen, if you follow me on Instagram, you may have seen some of my beautiful test knitter socks and I just couldn't be happier with all my testers and how that turned out. Just really, really beautiful. Um, the testing has ended and I don't have a firm release date yet for the pattern, but I believe it will be early April. Part of the reason for that is because I'm going to be out of, the t out of town the next three weeks and I really want to be able to give the attention that uh, this like pattern deserves as far as the like release date and everything. So, um, so yeah, I am going to be really releasing this pattern in April and I'll have like a firm date for y'all soon and I'll post about that probably first on uh on Instagram so stay tuned there but uh yeah I'm really excited about this pattern I've talked about it at length I don't need to talk about it much more now uh the yarn is Sunday Fiber Company in her barefoot organic merino sock base 
which is her standard that she uses for her sock sets. And this was a sock set that I purchased from her. The uh, main color is Stardust and the contrast color is Mermaid. And I could not love this yarn more. I love the color, I love the speckles. I love the like the sock base. It's just really, really fun to work with. It's, it's really squishy. It's got like really good kind of plump to it. Um, and yeah, I love these socks. <laughs> so those are the Ar almost Argyle socks. And if you are interested in knitting them, stay tuned. The pattern will be available next month. Uh, and then the last thing that I finished just in time. So I actually bound off this sock and this sweater both <laughs> on Monday. <laughs> um, so barely made my February deadline, but uh, this is the Marble Mount Pullover, which is a pattern by Hohi Locatelli. It is actually, this is the third day this week that I'm wearing this sweater. I love it. I love it. Um, I honestly was a little nervous. I didn't know if I would love it as much as I do because like when I laid it out to block, I was like, oh man, the yarn is like a little more variegated than I originally like thought that it would be. And just like looking at it, I was like, I don't know if this is really like my vibe. I'm not sure. And then the second that it dried and I put it on my body, I was in love with it. Like, I can't even tell you. I think this may be like the best fitting sweater I have maybe ever made. <laughs> Uh, it's only the second round yoke sweater I've ever made. Most of the time I make like raglans and drop shoulders. And the other round yoke sweater I made was a color work uh, yoke and it does not fit me very well at all. And so I kind of just thought like round yoke is not for me. This just like doesn't fit me super well and I can knit raglans and drop shoulders. And then I think I, I talked more about this in previous episodes, but I just like really was drawn to this sweater because of... The story and the location and everything and having met Hohi and I really love the lace detail and so I was like I have to go for it I'm gonna go for it and I'm so glad that I did because I think this fits beautifully I I'm really happy with the fit and I already am planning to make another one I think I want to make one without the lace so just make like a basic kind of like t-shirt um so we'll see how uh if I do that and like how that goes uh, without the lace detail, if I still like it as much, but more information about this sweater. So again, this is the Marble Mount Pullover, which is a pattern by Hokey Locatelli. I used uh, Granui <laughs> uh, in her singles base. It's a 100% merino single ply fingering weight yarn. And the colorway here is Three Sisters. And I do think this colorway did dye up a little differently on this base than some of the other bases that I've seen. It is a little bit more like variegated and more like the darker spots. There's more dark spots. Um, and at first I was a little bit like, oh, I don't know if I like that as much as I like it on this, like I've seen on the sock base. But now like having this sweater, I really like how it turned out and I'm really happy with it. Um, I knit the US side or I just combined two thoughts. <laughs> I knit the size three, the third size, and I used a US three needle, which I believe is the needle that the pattern calls for. And uh, I haven't measured it since I blocked it. I'm not sure exactly how I ended up gauge wise and like how much ease I have, but I'm really happy with, with the ease that I have. And this is on, I think my gauge was pretty close and I have a 33 inch bust. So if you're interested in knitting the pattern, um, I can go in and, and look at like how much ease I actually have and see if that's useful for y'all for fit reasons. But I will, um, I'm hoping actually to take finished object photos of this sweater today. It's on my list, my list of things to get through today. Uh, and if I'm able to do that, then I will probably put it, put that information, the pictures on Ravelry and then also like update the information about the fit and everything so that you guys can see that if you are interested but that those are all my finished objects that's all I have that I finished um yeah I'm really happy with it I think it was a little bit less prolific of a knitting month February I think I knit a little bit less than maybe other months I think it's a shorter month so that hurt me and then we were like busy on the weekends a lot and then I also was working quite a bit so I think all of that combined 
but I still knit a full fingering weight sweater. So I feel like it's pretty good. Uh, so yeah, that is my finished objects. So works in progress. This is actually going to be, you know, fluid between the works in progress and the acquisitions because some of the stuff I'm working on now, I actually am using new yarn that I got in the last couple weeks as well. But first I wanted to share with you, I went, as soon as I bound off everything on Monday, I went on a crazy swatch knitting kick. I was like, I don't know exactly what sweater I want to cast on next. So I'm just going to swatch for like five sweaters and see which one kind of like calls to me the most, like which one I'm the most excited about. And so that's what I did. I have, I think most of my swatches here and I can show you all. Yeah. And I put a photo on Instagram of these uh, swatches as well and like tagged the yarn for each one, but, excuse me. But, um, yeah, so this swatch I actually already had. This was, uh, long time viewers will remember, I <laughs> attempted to make this like, <laughs> this mock neck brioche pullover uh, using this yarn. So this is Derrera Natura Ulysse, or I'm probably saying everything wrong. I'm very sorry. Uh, and the, this is also French, I'm gonna say it wrong. Is it, is it Pauvre? Pauvre Blanc or is it Poivre Blanc? I don't know. One of those. I'll write it down below. <laughs> uh, but this is the colorway and this is just a half brioche swatch from uh, before. So I didn't actually knit this one in the last week, but I was considering casting something back on with this yarn. And then I also knit a swatch for the Cumulus blouse. So I'll talk about this one a little bit more later. I guess that's maybe a hint as to what I may have cast on, but um, this was, yeah, this is for the Cumulus blouse, and it is two strands of Surrey Alpaca held together. So alpaca, it's the Surrey Alpaca in silk. It's like a lace to fingering weight yarn, which is like 75% Surrey Alpaca, 25% lace, or not lace, silk roughly, uh, and so I swatched for that, and I wish you guys could feel this. It is amazing, it's an absolute dream. So that's one I knit. I also knit up a swatch of some La Bienname Cori Worsted, which is a yarn that I got for Christmas last year, and I'm hoping to do a new design with this yarn, and so I wanted to go ahead and swatch that up. I also swatched up this is Mono Still Uruguay in their Alpaca Heather base, um, which I think is like a wool alpaca blend. It's like a sport weight yarn, and I don't remember the color. I think it's like gray. I took some notes, but not enough notes, clearly. And this is also just half brioche. I'm thinking about making a cardigan. I was originally considering making a Straya by Andrea Maori, and now I'm considering just making another oversized seasons cardigan and adjusting the gauge, like knitting a different size to make it fit because it's originally designed for like a worsted weight yarn, and this is a sport weight yarn, so my gauge is off. So I'd have to kind of adjust that to get the fit that I want. But this one feels so good too. The alpaca feels really nice. Um, I almost cast this one on. Uh, and then the last swatch I knit was using this Autumn and Indigo. This is their classic sport base, and the colorway is Loma. This is yarn I got for my birthday like a couple years ago that I've just been holding on, waiting for the perfect project. I originally had another project in mind, but um, I and you guys know, like half of these, so more than half of these swatches are half brioche. I love half brioche. I love brioche. I love it all. I love the squishy rib texture. So uh, this one, I think I want to knit the Birch Pullover by Andrea Maori, but that uses fingering weight yarn. And this is sport weight yarn. And it also, the pattern calls for a size two needle. And I didn't want to do that. I wanted to knit it on a size four. So I did sport weight yarn on a size four and was like <laughs> trying to do the math to figure out how to adjust the pattern so that it would work properly. Like, could I just knit a different size? And unfortunately, 
my gauge was off enough that I couldn't just like knit one of the other sizes. So I actually went to knit night with my friends last week and we spent like half the time doing math to figure out like how, how to adjust the pattern so that I could knit it at this gauge. Like doing ratios and all this stuff. And it was, it was actually very fun. You know, uh, I think all of us are kind of math nerds. So <laughs> it's probably not a surprise that we spent half of our time doing knitting math. But, uh, but yeah, that is what the swatch is for. So I did a whole bunch of swatches. And then um, I decided I was going to cast this one on the Birch Pullover by Andrea Mowry. It's also her March to May uh, knit along right now. If you guys haven't seen that, I think she's got some information in like one of her YouTube videos and on uh, Instagram and, and on Ravelry as well. So you should check that out if you're interested. But you can knit like a sweater or a shawl and participate in one of Andrea Mowry's patterns, uh, a sweater or a shawl and participate in her knit along. It's like, okay, I'll do this. So I, uh, <laughs> yeah, I did all the math and was about to cast this on. And then I last minute changed my mind. And part of the reason I changed my mind was because uh, of my friends. So I cast on the Cumulus blouse instead. So, okay, I feel like <laughs> there's a lot going on. I'm all over the place. But uh, I went to the Portland Rose City Yarn Crawl, not this last weekend, like not the current weekend, but the, I guess it was last, not last Thursday, but the Thursday before. <laughs> um, so not last Thursday, but the Thursday before a couple of my friends and I drove down to Portland for the Rose City Yarn Crawl. And part of the reason we went on Thursday was because that was the trunk show for Allie uh, of Explore Knits. She was having a trunk show at Naughty Lamb and we wanted to make sure and go for that. So we left early on Thursday morning and we made it to Naughty Lamb and we went and bought uh, a ton of Explore Knits yarn. But when we were at the trunk show, we saw that Allie was wearing this beautiful cumulus blouse. And I don't remember the exact colors hers was in. It was like two of her pink tonals, one of them maybe untamed. Uh, but I think you can find info. She's posted about it on Instagram. So if you're interested, go to Explore Knits on Instagram and you can find info about her cumulus blouse but we were all just like wow this is so beautiful and it's so fuzzy and we just want to have it so uh my friend katie and i both bought yarn to make a cumulus blouse and then um our friend sylvan already had some yarn in stash to knit it with and so we were like okay we're just gonna do like a informal little knit along the three of us are gonna knit this cumulus blouse together um, and so I came home and I swatched for it, um, shortly after that, as soon as I cast off all my stuff for February and I really wanted to cast on, but I wanted to wait for my friends until they were ready. Uh, and so like they had some other stuff on the needles that they wanted to get taken care of before casting on. And then I swatched for mine and I brought it to our knit night and I think, uh, yeah, they decided to cast on. <laughs> they decided to get started. So um, they like have, I think, since wound up their yarn and like started to swatch or whatever. And then I just went ahead and cast on that night instead of casting on the birch because I just was like really drawn to this super fluffy yarn. And oh my gosh, y'all, I wish you could feel this. I wish you could feel it. It feels amazing. It's so soft and it's like squishy and it's a cloud, but uh, the yarn. The yarn is uh, Explore Knits in her Surrey base, which is, uh, I think I mentioned, is like a 75-25, roughly. It may be like 76 or 74 or whatever. Okay, sorry. Lots of cuts today. I'm doing my best. I'm having, of course, what you expect, battery, memory card, all the issues. But hopefully we're good to go for the rest here. But anyway, uh, what I was talking about. This is two strands of the Surrey silk base held together, which is, I don't think I have the tag here. I'm pretty sure it's like roughly 75, 25 Surrey alpaca and silk. And uh, it makes the most amazing fabric. I need to give you all like a close up of this fabric. I wish that you could re reach through the screen and feel it. It feels like truly just a dream, a cloud. Um, but here's a close up of what the fabric looks like. It is dreamy. 
just super fuzzy. And this colorway is linen, which is just a beautiful neutral. I considered, oh, I considered doing one. I don't know if it'll focus. Come on, please. Okay. Oh, there we go. Okay. I considered doing one closer to the colors that Allie's uh, Cumulus Blast was in. Uh, it's like a kind of a beautiful dusty pink. Uh, and then I was like, no, Emily, you want neutrals. <laughs> like, you really, you really just want this. <laughs> so, yeah, I cast that on. The, uh, the Cumulus Blast, if you guys are unfamiliar, is like a, it's a pullover with a little bit of a v-neck and then it's got a little bit of positive ease, very fluffy, and there are I-cord bind-offs around the neckline and the bottom and the sleeves. And so it's knit flat at the beginning and it's like a raglan at the top. And then once you finish the V, I think you connect and do the body. And then we'll pick up for the sleeves, I assume. I'm not sure. I didn't read that far ahead, I just started. So I'm almost through the raglan actually. It knits up so quickly because it's knit at like a pretty big gauge. And I'm knitting the smallest size. My gauge is actually, I think, pretty close to on, but I had to go down a needle size. So I think the pattern calls for a US seven and I'm using a US six to get gauge. And yeah, I'm knitting the smallest size, which I think will give me you know, a little bit of positive ease. I don't remember how much, but I think it'll fit the way that I want it to. So, uh, but I think this will be a good project since it's pretty basic stockinette. I'm, uh, I'm hoping it'll be a good project to take with me to Arizona. And then I'm a little concerned that I'll go through it too quickly. I don't know. I probably shouldn't be concerned about that because, uh, spring training is generally like a very busy time at work. So like I probably won't have a ton of time to knit, but I am bringing a backup sweater project in case I finish this while I'm there. So I am bringing the yarn to do the birch as well, just in case I finish this. But that is my cumulus blouse, my sweater work in progress. And then my other work in progress is also exploring its yarn that I got at the trunk show. Uh, I cast on another pair of almost Argyle socks for my husband's office. So I'd asked him, um, well, I owed him, I think, a pair of socks for a while. I've been saying that I was going to knit him another pair of socks and everything and just hadn't gotten around to it. And then one of the pairs I made him uh, got like several holes in it. It's my fault. I knit the socks out of, it's like 100% merino wool. There's no nylon in it. And it's like, I don't know. It's just like wasn't the right yarn. Brennan wasn't very hard wearing. And so he wore holes in them. And then in like... In places that were kind of I think gonna be tough to mend and I also was like this yarn is just not gonna hold up like I don't think it's worth mending uh, <laughs> I mean I could mend it and it would probably last a little while but I think it would just continue to get sock holes in it over and over and so I was like okay I definitely need to knit not this another pair of socks so I asked him what socks he wanted maybe he was sucking up a little bit but he said he wanted the almost argyle socks my most recent design and so when I saw this color first of all uh, wow, this is the most beautiful color. <laughs> and also like very me. I love this dark blue color. But I saw this at the Explore in its trunk show and was just like, okay, well, I have to have that. Like, I don't know what I'm going to make probably socks or something, but I'm just obsessed with it. Uh, it's truly just like the most beautiful. I don't know how it's showing up here it looks a little more blue and i think in person it's a little more green as well but a truly beautiful color this is explore knits denali sock base which i think is an 80 20. again i don't have the tag but it's a fingering weight yarn with uh, merino wool and nylon in it and i believe the color right here is nightfall which is yeah just Gorgeous, and I saw it and I was like, okay, I think Knopfis would love socks in this color. So I bought it, brought it home, and he was like, yes, that's the one. And I had like some other yarn I was gonna cast on socks for him using, and he was like, no, this is this is the one. And I knew it. So yeah, I cast on a new pair of almost Argyle socks. 
I'm knitting a larger size for him and it's a darker color so I was a little bit worried about like the stitch definition if you, you wouldn't be able to see the um, the diamond pattern very well like on camera you may not be able to see it I'm not sure um, the light <laughs> but I think you can see it decently well uh, and like it'll be kind of subtle I think on the darker yarn which I think will be good for him so yeah I'll take these with me on the trip as well and hopefully I can get some good work on them um, I also wanted to record a tutorial video for one sp oh, for one part of the pattern and so I needed to cast on another pair of socks so that I could do the tutorial so I did that with these socks as well and this again is also an acquisition. <laughs> so that's a good segue into my acquisitions. I have lots to show you in that regard. Um, okay, so I bought, I think I talked to you guys about the stress knits yarn that I was going to order from her last update and I did order stress knits yarn. I also bought some yarn from Woolberries in stock update a little while ago. And then I went to Portland and I bought some yarn at the Yarn Crawl in Portland. And then there was some uh, Shibui Silk Cloud on sale that I was kind of had my eye on to match up with another yarn that I have in my stash. So I bought that. And then we went to the La Mercerie opening. <laughs> Uh, is a new physical location for Jess, uh, who is Shop La Mercery on Instagram. If you haven't seen her or like ordered yarn from her, you should definitely check her out. Just the most lovely person and also a uh, beautiful yarn. She carries really beautiful yarn, but she opened up a physical location and that opening was yesterday. And so we went to the opening and I bought some yarn there as well. So I have a lot to go through and I'm gonna to try to go chronologically through uh, this. But I will say since some of this stuff was ordered, it was like purchased, I don't even think all of it was purchased in February. I think some of it may have been purchased in January. Maybe not, but I don't know. <laughs> I, bought, I bought a lot of yarn, but we're gonna go through chrono chronologically. So first up is the stress knits that I bought. So I talked about this already, but it has since arrived. It arrived in the last few, few weeks. And the first thing I bought was three skeins of her cloud base, which is her Surrey alpaca and silk base. And this I'm intending to use to hold together with a strand of fingering weight, like sock yarn to make to use up some of my advent minis from not my last year but the previous year's advent i want to use some of the lighter colors alternating with a pale pink and hold this with it to make like a really kind of low contrast pink dreamy pullover and i think i'll do a raglan for that one and so i got the surrey for that and this is her palm lines colorway which is the most beautiful, just like pale pink. And I think it will go perfect with the yarn I have planned. So I got that and then while I was there buying from her update, I had, I've had i had my eye on this colorway for a while. This is Where Does the Good Go? And I know I don't knit with it a ton, I do some, but uh, yellow is actually my favorite color. I love yellow. I know you guys probably would have guessed like gray or blue because I knit with gray and blue I think the most, but uh, I actually love yellow and so especially with socks I love to uh, have really fun yarns that maybe I wouldn't wear in a garment but I definitely would in socks and I think this just fits that perfectly. This yarn is beautiful. I It has so much energy and makes me feel really happy <laughs> when I look at it and so I got a skein of it and I will probably eventually make it into socks. but. Beautiful yellow with like pinks and greens and blues in there as well. Just a very bright but dreamy color, I guess. So that is what I ordered from Stress Knits. Then I ordered a couple of skeins from Woolberry. So I got these two from Woolberry, and these are both on her Berry Cashmere base, which I have used before and I love. I actually have used this exact yarn before. I used it as the uh, main color for one of my stripy turtle tanks. 
And so this is an 80% superwash merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon base, and it is really nice. It feels really, really soft, uh, and I really like it. So I got another skein of the, this is the Mind Colorway, which I think originally was from her, uh, it was like the Under the Sea collection, which is where I got it from, and it is, yeah, it looks white probably, or like cream, but it is the very palest pink. I don't know if you can see that super well, but it is, yeah, just a really nice pale pink. It look like it passes as a neutral because it's like so light, but I love this color so much. So I got another skein of that, and then I also got, this is the Puget Sound colorway. And like, y'all know I love blue, and it's also named Puget Sound, and I'm like, I'm such a sucker for that. Like, if you have a collection or, like, you name your yarn something that, like, I have some sort of emotional attachment to, I'm way more likely to buy the yarn. I know that, like, doesn't make sense. I mean, I don't know. It just, it gets me. So, so this is called Puget Sound, and I bought it. Uh, and I actually, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with these. This one I may combine with my hand-dyed minis and make stripy socks. I think this would be a really good main color to fit with those like brighter mini skeins that I dyed. And then this one, you may have actually noticed I didn't talk about this a ton when I talked about my finished objects and whips, that I didn't talk about that slanty stripe vest that I had on the needles. And I think, um, man, I've been just like, uh, back and forth with this project. I've done a ton of different iterations of it and just like haven't been able to find something that I really really love with it and I think the palette wasn't right for that project um I had put like some of the lighter colors together in a stripe and it just like didn't work out well and I just I wasn't loving it and if it's something that I'm going to design like I will I need to love it I need to really love it so I'm considering using some different yarn and also changing the construction a little bit again <laughs> again I'm going to change it up <laughs> but I, I think I really do want to change the construction because I really was just the way I had it set up I was going to have to pick up stitches for the button band and I really didn't want to do that so I want to do something with the construction so that I knit the button band along with the vest and I think I'm going to switch and maybe use this as my main color and then use some darker colors for the stripes uh, so that you can get that really good color distinction on the stripes. And I think with this as like a main color, I think it will work really well. So no immediate plans. I think I'm gonna give that one a little bit of a rest and give it some space and we'll see how I feel when I come back from Arizona and I have a little bit more time and I may come back to it, but I actually, there were a couple, well, I'll get through some of my other acquisitions, but I had like a color palette pulled together with some of my recent acquisitions that I really loved. So I'll show that to you guys in a second. But, okay, so that was the Woolberry I got. And then next up I have the yarn that I got from the Portland Rose City Yarn Crawl. So I already showed you, I got the linen from Explorer Knits. I got this Denali sock, Nightfall from Explorer Knits, this blue. I also got one other skein of Explorer Knits. This is Moonstone, which is, I believe, from her advent last year and is just beautiful. By the time we got into the store, like we were there, you know, 20 minutes after opening or something, we had to wait in line outside. And by the time we got in, I think almost all the Moonstone was gone. I think there were just like a couple skeins of it left. And so, I mean, I honestly probably would have bought a sweater quantity of this yarn because it's so beautiful, but I ended up just getting one skein of it. So I don't know what I have planned for this, but it was too beautiful not to buy. So <laughs> I bought that. <laughs> uh, also in Portland, we went to, so I think I got this one and this one I got from Starlight Knitting Society, which is another local yarn store in Portland. They had a La Bienna May trunk show uh, at the Yarn Crawl. And 
I love these colors. <laughs> I really do. These are different bases, actually. So this red one is the Merino DK base, and the colorway is Eric Northam Northman. Beautiful dark red. And then this one is the Cash Merino base, which feels amazing. <laughs> and it is uh, 75% Merino, 15% Cashmere, 10% Nylon. And it's a fingering weight base, and the color weight is Yellow Brick Road. I love this. And I think with this one, I want to make like a cabled hat. And with this one, I want to make some sort of like cropped tank top, I think would be really fun with this color. So yes, I got those. And then we went to Ritual Dyes and I have like followed it, Ritual Dyes on Instagram. They have some beautiful yarns uh, and I had never been to their actual shop. And so I walked in and y'all, I can't even tell you, it's a pretty small shop, but you know, there's yarn everywhere. I walked in and I saw this yarn and like, I don't even know if I can describe to you the like feeling or reaction that I had. I just like zeroed in on it and I was like, that one I want. Like that is that is the yarn, it's beautiful. And they only had one skein of it left and I just went and I grabbed it and here it is. And I love it. It is their Maiden base, which is a two ply fingering weight yarn and the colorway is Amber Resin. And I, I don't know what it is about this color specifically, but I'm so in love with it. It's, it's beautiful. It's just the most gorgeous, like pink, but orange, but like bright, but also kind of subtle. I don't know. I, I'm obsessed <laughs> with this. So I had some of my yarns together uh, like in a pile after going to Portland and I saw this one with the Woolberry. So the two Woolberry yarns, this one and this one together. And I was like, okay, I love this palette. Here, let me put this one on this side. You maybe can see it a little better. I love this palette. And so I may revisit, depending on how much of this one I have left after knitting off as a socks, I may revisit and do a main color of this and then do some striping with these three colors and a couple others. So I may add like a gray in there, like this one. And I'm thinking about adding a yellow. What you? What do you guys think? I'm thinking about a yellow, not probably not this yellow, probably something a little bit more like orangey mustardy, like golden, less bright. But what do you think about like this palette? Am I crazy for loving this? It also feels kind of like springy. I don't know. I love, oh my gosh. I love these yarns. They're so beautiful. I love yarn. <laughs> I'm so obsessed. <laughs> but yeah, so that was that was the yarn purchases from Portland. I also actually bought a couple of extra things. There was an, a shop we went to. I think it was called like Northwest Yarns, maybe. And I bought some beautiful walnut wood buttons from that shop. And here they are. I don't know if you'll be able to see them super well, but they're pretty cute, maybe. I don't know. There, you can see them pretty well, but really nice little wood buttons. So I will, I'll use these for my next cardigan. And then I also bought this knitting bag. This one I bought from Weird Sisters was the yarn store. This was the last one we went to on Thursday. We did also, like I'll talk about, maybe I'll talk about this a little bit later, but we went to eight yarn stores in one day, <laughs> which feels like a lot. Uh, I was pretty tired at the end of the day, but yeah, we did make it to all eight yarn stores in a single day. And we drove three hours to Portland and then back. Also, all in the same day. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but I also bought this bag, which has this 
cute little yellow handle. It reminds me a little bit of like a fringe field supply bag. It's got nice pockets on the inside and everything, but also it's like skinnier and taller, which I personally like better because I think it will fit into other bags better since it's not as wide. I think it, this will fit like into my backpack really nice. So yeah, I got that bag. I got those buttons and I got some yarn. And then we're almost through the acquisitions, y'all. Uh, like I mentioned before, I have bought, so Mad Tosh and Shibui did this collaboration where they came up with several colorways and then they did them on the Tosh Marina Light, which is the um, single ply fingering base Mad Madeline Tosh has. And then uh, Shibui did this, like a similar colorway or like basically the same color on their Silk Cloud, which is their uh, mohair. It's a mohair and silk, 60-40 mohair and silk base. It's like a lace weight. And so I did, I, uh, one of my friends uh, messaged me that this yarn was on sale on uh, like webs, like yarn.com. And I have the three skeins of the, uh, of the Madeline Tosh, like Tosh Marino Light in this color. I guess I could grab it. Well, no, I've shown it before. It's basically this color, but it's fingering weight singles. <laughs> and so I uh, was kind of wanting to hold that together with mohair and make uh, like a cardigan or something. And I didn't have the mohair. I didn't buy it at the time that I bought the fingering weight yarn or the like singles, the Madeline Tosh singles. And so I was kind of regretting that and then this was on sale and so I bought it. So I bought three skeins from this to go with my my Tosh singles in the same color. So I'm gonna make a beautiful dark red cardigan. Is anyone surprised that I got dark red yarn? No. <laughs> and my last acquisition is from the store opening yesterday. So we went to the La Mer Mercerie physical shop location opening. So it is in Polsbo, Washington, which is a little bit of a ferry ride from Seattle. And then you've got to take either a bus or drive or whatever to the shop once you get to the island. And uh, the store is so beautiful. So any of you that are in the area, it is absolutely worth the trip. You should go to Polsbo and you should see the store. It is beautiful. And Jess, the store owner, is just the best. <laughs> and uh, the, yeah, the yarn selection is just beautiful. Uh, but she had a couple of special yarns available for the opening yesterday. She had uh, ampersand fibers is her uh, like in-house yarn which is a beautiful non-super wash wool. And she had some skeins of ampersand dyed by Allie of Explorer Knits in some beautiful colorways. And I didn't end up grabbing any of that, but I almost did. There were some really pretty colors. And then she also had a special sock set uh, from Woolberry. And this is the sock set and I did grab one. It is called Sand Castle. And it's the berry sock set. So it's 80% merino, 20% nylon. And yeah, this was celebrating the shop opening, but also it is La Mercerie's fifth anniversary of when she opened her online shop. So uh, just was too beautiful and I just had to grab one. So I got the sock set yesterday, uh, a beautiful pink and I mean, I love yellow. So I thought they went together beautifully as well and will make beautiful socks. So that is it. <laughs> That is all my acquisitions. I have quite a pile of yarn here and this isn't even all of it because some of it is, uh, has already been cast on. <laughs> but I'm actually kind of loving when I look at it. I can see my palette is like these really pale neutrals and of course like dark reds and uh, yellows and blues. I don't know, I just, I'm happy, of course, with the yarn that I pick because I pick it, but I'm really happy with developing my own kind of color sense and color palette as well. So that's been really fun for me to do the, over the last like couple of years. I've been thinking more about that, about the color palette. I actually have a video I recorded a while back about my personal color palette. So if you guys are interested in that, I think you can find it in my previous videos. Uh, but that, yeah, that's all I've got for kind of yarn content. Um, I guess I can talk a little bit more about going to Portland 
uh, yeah, so we went up in one day. We uh, drove to Portland, <laughs> we went to all the shops and then drove back. We brought lots of snacks and uh, and we did have to wait in line at a couple stores. So it was, it wasn't too, the weather wasn't too bad. It was actually kind of bright for part of the day. It was a little chilly though. So, um, but yeah, we had an amazing time. The Portland shops were beautiful, really great yarn selection, some really great trunk shows. We actually ran into uh, a couple of online knitting friends. So uh, we saw Aro and Megan. Uh, Megan is Kimchi and Co on Instagram, and Aro is uh, of Aro Knits and Pearls. She has her own video podcast on YouTube. If you haven't checked her podcast out, you definitely should. I watch it all the time, and she has just the dreamiest palette, and she uh, Tess knits a ton and knits so many sweaters. <laughs> I can't believe how many sweaters she knits. Uh, but yes, we actually met them outside of Naughty Lamb. They were coming out while we were waiting in line to go in and uh, chatted with them for a little bit and got to take some pictures. My friend Sylvan actually went to middle school with Aro. So that was really fun for them to kind of uh, meet back up. And then, yeah, it was just lovely me meeting and chatting with them. Uh, so yeah, definitely check out Megan and Aro, their like Instagrams and, and Aro's podcast as well. Uh, so that was really fun. And then, yeah, just like going around Portland, some beautiful stores. I think, um, yeah, I'm trying to think about, yeah, I guess that was pretty much it. We just went to a ton of yarn stores and bought some beautiful yarn. Uh, and then we got some, uh, ramen and then we went home. So, so that was pretty much it for Portland. It was so much fun. Uh, other things that have happened in life since I last recorded. So my parents visited shortly after I last posted a video and that was a ton of fun. Unfortunately, the weather was horrible when they were here. So we could not really do anything because like COVID, we didn't want to go do anything inside and the weather was horrible outside. So we didn't really, we did go disc golf while it was raining, <laughs> um, which, you know, <laughs> it was pretty unenjoyable for a while, but uh, it stopped raining at some point and it was better then, but yeah, we did do that. But otherwise, we pretty much stayed indoors and we just made a ton of food. So we made, I made sourdough toast and we made avocado toast with like, uh, Knox did some eggs, like over easy eggs. And we put them on top of our avocado toast and that was amazing. And then we, I also made a like garlic and shallot toast, which was really good. And I want to try again and uh, cook the shallots and the garlic for longer to make them like mushier. So they make more of a paste but that was delicious on fresh sourdough. So very yummy. We also made sourdough pizza, which is one of my favorites. And we also, I tried a new biscuit recipe. I've made biscuits a couple times before, but I tried a new recipe that was a little more laminated. So it would give us more like flaky layers. It was really good. And then Nafis made homemade gravy and we had biscuits and gravy for our Sunday breakfast when they were here. <laughs> that was so tasty. I definitely will be wanting to make biscuits and gravy again. Um, well, that was really fun. We really enjoyed having them here uh, just like over a weekend. And then let's see, after that, last week or like the Thursday after that was the Portland Rose City Yarn Crawl. And then that weekend, Nafis and I actually went to the market and we got some pastries like uh like pork buns and stuff from um me some pastry which is a really tasty uh little like asian bakery type uh place in the market and that was really good on sunday last weekend we made lemon ricotta pancakes for sunday breakfast and that was also super tasty not just did eggs and sausage as well and uh and so we enjoyed that and then yeah yesterday we went to the La Mercerie opening um so Nafis, myself and then a couple of my knitting friends as well went uh we just went together on the ferry and went to the opening and bought a ton of yarn and then we came back and went back to Bainbridge like close to the ferry terminal on Bainbridge Island and we ate the most delicious Vietnamese food at this place called, I think it was called Basa. So good. It was a recommendation from Jess and it was really tasty. <laughs> they had these, they were like truffle fries, like 
potato wedges, but they had like truffle on them and they were so good. And then, yeah, just generally, you know, very tasty Vietnamese food. I got some, like a rice type bowl and Malcolm's got some noodles and they were really good. Uh, and then, yeah, we came back. We took Norman a couple times to the park yesterday because we felt bad for leaving him so long because he's not used to being left uh, because we're home all the time because we both work from home most of the time now. And so we had to leave him to go to the shop opening. And so we took him to the park for like an hour before and also for an hour afterwards. <laughs> and actually, funny thing, I don't know, I'm probably rambling on for too long now, but Norman, uh, in the past when we've taken like a ball or something to the park, he'll, like, you can throw it and he'll run after it, but he won't bring it back. So he'll like run at the ball. And then, like, once he gets to it, he just, like, gets distracted and leaves. And so he won't bring the ball back. So we're like, okay, it's probably not worth it. Like, we can just run around with him and whatever. But yesterday we went to the park, and there was a golf ball at the park that he seemed, like, kind of interested in. So we threw the golf ball. And the golf ball is, like, small and slippery. But he would pick it up and bring it back to us. And he fetched that golf ball back and forth, like, maybe ten times. We were like, what? we didn't know you would do this. Like we definitely would have been doing this instead of basically when we try to tire him up out at the park, Nafis and I either call him back and forth between us or we just like chase him. We just like run around with him. <laughs> like we've taken him some dog parks in the past, but he, Norman is like a very anxious dog. He gets like really stressed out, especially in new situations and like with new dogs and stuff too. And so it's not a great time for him and it's not a great time for us so we've decided that like it's better and we just like play with him on our own so we take him to the park and we put him on this long leash and then we just like chase him <laughs> like run him around and so after he showed interest in the golf ball we were like okay we can be optimizing this like this we can do better and so i think we're going to try to take him today and bring an actual like tennis ball and throw that around i think we've got like a chuck it or whatever i don't know if you guys know what that is it's like a plastic thing that you can put the ball in and you can throw it and it'll go farther than if you just like throw it yourself uh so we're gonna try that i think and see if he'll continue or if yesterday was just an anomaly i don't know we'll see we'll see what norman does um he definitely keeps us on our toes so but he got lots of hard time yesterday because we felt bad for leaving him at home uh by himself while we were at the shop opening uh, i guess he's spoiled now because we like never leave him <laughs> when we leave him sometimes for like short times but uh he's like he used to stay at home when we went to work a couple days a week we'd like take him to daycare uh sometimes so he could like play with other dogs and stuff but uh most of the time when we went to work he would just like hang out at home until we got back uh and now we feel so bad about leaving him just because he's not used to it i guess i don't know he's probably fine he probably doesn't care but anyway uh i feel like I've rambled plenty. I've got, like I mentioned, a ton of other things on my list today. So I'm going to log off here and try to tackle some of those. But I really appreciate you tuning in. It's going to be a little while before my next uh, episode because, again, I am going to Arizona for the next three weeks. But I will be back in early April. And I'm hoping after that to be a little bit more regular. So, yeah, I think there may be some some news and some updates upon my return uh, that I'm excited to share with you all. And hopefully I can be a little bit more regular with the podcast. So but I appreciate you guys sticking with me and I will see you in a few weeks. I hope you do lots of knitting and watch lots of baseball and have a great week. Bye.